Taylorville, Illinois is 200 miles south of Chicago, and it's about to become the proving ground for a new way of generating electricity. The plant will run on coal, but instead of burning it, the Taylorville Energy Center will convert it to gas. Rich Samuels tells us why this new coal plant could be the wave of the future. Until now, Taylorville's principal claim to fame has been that it's one of the county seats where young Abe Lincoln practiced law. But soon this town of 12,000, 20 miles southeast of Springfield will become the site of the nation's largest so-called clean coal power generating plant. Northeast of town, the Taylorville Energy Center is about to be built. The Polk Power Plant, 40 miles southeast of Tampa, Florida, is a rough approximation of what will rise in Taylorville. Polk went online in 1996, and it's a pioneering implementation of coal gasification technology. The temperature of the combustion inside the furnace is about 2200 degrees. In conventional coal-fired generating plants like those in the Chicago area, coal is burned, and the combustion of coal releases potentially dangerous substances like sulfur, nitrogen, and mercury. They are difficult to remove, and they're passed into the environment in quantities greater than now acceptable. The gasification process at Polk removes impurities much more easily and cheaply, and undesirable emissions are minimized. But Polk, with a generating capacity of 260 megawatts, is a miniature version of what's coming to Taylorville. Taylorville's much larger. Taylorville's going to be a net 630 megawatt project where that would power about 630,000 homes. So it's, it's a big base load coal plant. And it is built that size so that we can get the economies of scale necessary to get a low energy price. The state of Illinois passionately wooed the developers of the Taylorville project because this so-called clean coal plant will benefit Illinois' much beleaguered coal industry. 238 billion tons of imprisoned energy lie buried under the soil of Illinois. There is, in fact, high BTU coal beneath 65% of the state's surface. And Taylorville is in the heart of the Illinois coal basin. Coal and coal mining, of course, are pretty much the reasons for Taylorville being here in the first place. What the coal mining industry in this town was, was the actual lifeblood. If you go back to the immigrants that settled this area, uh, you have the Italians, you had the Polish, uh, you had the French, which my ancestry is from. They knew coal mining from the old country. They came over here to mine coal. Coal was king in Illinois until the 1980s, and the Peabody No. 10 mine not far from Taylorville was the state's largest. 100% of its output fired a Commonwealth Edison coal-fired generating station located at the mine mouth. But the coal from Mine 10, like all Illinois coal, was high in sulfur. And when strict sulfur emission standards kicked in, Mine 10 shut down with predictable consequences. Once that mine closed, it was devastating to the community. And people, there weren't, you know, other jobs, similar jobs around. The power plant, now owned by Dominion, is still there, but it presently burns low sulfur coal shipped by rail from Wyoming's Powder River Basin. Not a trace remains of Peabody Mine Number 10. The same story played out in other mines and communities throughout the Illinois coal basin. When I started in the coal mines, we had about 17,000 coal miners, and these were guys who were men and women that were making very good salaries with good benefits. Uh, today we're down to about 4,000. The low that we had was around 2,900. This, this building was built originally by the federal government, and it was uh, part of a national mining research network. At Southern Illinois University's Coal Technology Institute in Carbondale, the search has long been underway for technologies that would make high sulfur Illinois coal commercially viable once again. This is an experimental gasifier. Turning Illinois coal into relatively pure combustible gas seems to be the best bet. Gasification has tremendous promise for Illinois coal because gasification cleans the resulting products to a degree that we can remove essentially all of the sulfur and we can remove almost all of the other emissions that are regulated today. So the use of a relatively high sulfur coal is not a detriment when a gasification system is used because we can clean it up. 
Researchers at the Gas Technology Institute in Des Plaines are likewise experimenting with coal gasification as a substitute for natural gas. The coal is put into a very hot environment and just like in combustion, what you want to do is break apart those bonds between the carbon and hydrogen. Under high pressure, the gasifier converts the coal into a synthetic gas or syngas as it's called. Activated charcoal captures the mercury from the syngas and the sulfur is removed before it enters the environment. The purified syngas then fires a turbine which generates electricity. A heat recovery generator produces more power. The steam condenses and the generation cycle begins anew. The technology is formally called Integrated Gasification Combined Cycle or IGCC and one of the virtues of this mouthful is its versatility. One of the most appealing things about gasification is the fact that you create this intermediate uh, product that is essentially uh, carbon and hydrogen uh, molecules that are able to be reconstituted in a variety of different forms. You can use them as a combustion fuel uh, or you can go to uh, uh, a step where you create a pipeline quality substitute natural gas. So from uh, those all of our energy needs, uh, transportation fuels, uh, uh, natural gas uh, as a feedstock and as a fuel, and electric power generation. The gasification can be uh, an important part of the solution for all those needs. The gasification process also makes removal of carbon dioxide, the principal greenhouse gas, possible before it goes up the stack. Environmentalists who oppose new conventional coal-fired plants support coal gasification projects. What we ought to be doing is trying IGCC technology, the coal gasification, um, do two plants, three plants, four plants, kick the tires, see how much it costs, see how well it works. If it turns out to be a coal technology that's clean and really works well, then that's the wave of the future. There's some evidence that the future for plants using this technology is now. This is really uh, taking hold nationwide. And if you had gone back maybe even three years ago, you wouldn't have found any applications. And there's more in the pipeline. So I think what that tells me is that the marketplace is saying that gasification uh, is at a reasonable price. And certainly its environmental performance is un unequaled. Here on the outskirts of Taylorville, coal gasification will undergo its most significant test to date. It's a billion dollar undertaking for its developers Aurora and Tenasca. We have uh, a very strong community support behind the project. We have coal miners who want to make sure that we're burning Illinois coal. We have a state that is very committed to IGCC and clean coal technology. Uh, we have a company that is ready to build the first of its size and we're ready to put our money where our mouth is uh, for building this type of project. Nothing close to this has come to Taylorville before. You know, the, the impact of all of this is going to put Illinois and certainly Taylorville on the map. As I was talking with uh, some people from Tenasca and Aurora regarding this, this is one of the first plants of its kind. They said you can expect uh, visitors, not just from Illinois and not just from the United States, but you will find visitors from all over the world because of the new technologies being developed with high sulfur coal. The developers hope to break ground here by the end of 2007. For Chicago Tonight, this is Rich Samuels. Coal gasification by itself will not eliminate emissions of carbon dioxide, the principal greenhouse gas. In our next report on coal and the environment, we'll look at new ways of dealing with one of the principal causes of global warming. Environmental reporting on Chicago Tonight is made possible in part by the Joyce Foundation, dedicated to protecting the Great Lakes, fresh water at the heart of America.